Chan Mat Yasya Yato Nivyat Itaratas Chate Swavigyaswarat Vigyaswarat Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiat Surayaha Tene Brahma Rudaya Adikavaye Mujantija Suraya Tejo Vari Midam Yatavini Mayoya Chatri Sago Mesha Tejo Vari Mridam Jatavini Mayo Jatra Tri Sago Mesha Damna Swena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Swena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Oh my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva Oh my Lord Shri Krishna Son of Vasudeva Oh all pervading personality Godhead O all providing personality of Godhead, offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. And the primeval truth. cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And He is independent because there is no other cause beyond Him. And He is independent because there there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Water seen on fire or land seen on water. Water seen on fire, land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravotra. Dharma Projita Kaitravotra. Paramo Nirmatsuranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Parir Ishwaraha. Kimva Parir Ishwaraha. Sadhya Hridi Avarudya Tetra. Sadhya Hridi Avarudya Tetra. Kriti Bihis Susubis Dakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of their scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. I said, no, I'm not trying to make some stupid years in By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama Kalpataror Galitam Falam. Nigama Kalpataror Talitam. Sukamukad Amrita Dravya Samyutam. Sukamukad Amrita Dravya Samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Mohur Ahoraska Bhuvibhavaka. Mohur Ahoraska Bhuvibhavaka. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Shri Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shri Vatam Swakata Krishna. 
Punya Shravana Kirtana Hedyan Taksto He Abhadrani Vidu Noti Surit Satam Vidu Noti Surit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita Or to hear from him directly from through Bhagavad Gita Is it self-righteous activity? It is self-righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta preesu bhadresu. Nasta preesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki. Bhakti Bhavati In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the personal service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo bhadayas chaye. Kamalo bhadayas chaye. Chaita etar navidam. Chaita etar navidam. Stitvam sattve prasidati. Stitvam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavad bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavad tattva vijnanam. Bhagavad tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure devotion. I'm sorry, uh, pure goodness. Pure yeah. goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Bidyate hirdaya grantis. Siddhyante sarvasam sayat. Siddhyante sarvasam sayat. Siddhyante chasyakarmani. Siddhyante chasyakarmani. Krishna evatmanishwari. Krishna evatmanishwari. Thus Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus the Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Verse Number 6. Yastram Krishna Gate Duram. Sahagan vivadan vana Sochyo si asuchan rahasi Sochyo si asuchan rahasi Praharan vadam arhasi Praharan vadam arhasi Translation You rogue, do you dare beat an innocent cow because Lord Krishna and Arjuna, the carrier of the Kandiva bow, are out of sight? Since you are beating the innocent in a secluded place, you are considered a culprit and therefore deserve to be killed. Srila Prabhupada, purport. In a civilization where God is conspicuously banished and there is no devotee warrior like Arjuna, the associates of the age of Kali take advantage of this lawless kingdom and arranged to kill innocent animals like the cow in secluded slaughterhouses. Such murderers of animals stand to be condemned to death by the order of a pious king like Maharaj Brikshit. For a pious king, the culprit who kills an animal 
in a secluded place is punishable by death penalty, exactly like a murderer who kills an innocent child in a secluded place. Shila Prabhupada ki So we should notice here that not only you need saintly persons, but you need kshatriyas also in order to keep a society on the path of Sanatana Dharma. And when, that's why he says, uh, you rogue, do you dare beat an innocent cow because Lord Krishna and Arjuna, the carrier of the Gandiva bow, are out of sight? And again in the purport, Prabhupada says, in a civilization where God is conspicuously banished and there is no devotee warrior like Arjuna, the associates of the age of Kali take advantage of this lawless kingdom and arrange to kill innocent animals like the cow in secluded slaughterhouses. So this is very, very telling. Not only we need pure devotees, we also need Pure Chatriyas are willing to protect the principles of, of Dharma and devotees from, uh, and cows from being mistreated. So Brahmanas generally are not supposed to be trained to fight because they're all the time involved in study of the scriptures and in teaching uh, that transcendental knowledge to common folk, to anyone who wants to hear it, but it's usually the common folk. And on the other hand, you have trained kshatriyas who are not afraid to die um, because they know that their soul is eternal and will fight to the very last moment to protect the principles of dharma. <coughs> However, when the kshatriyas or demons, uh, so-called kshatriyas or demons, so-called brahmanas are speculators and the rest of society is degraded to very low class people, unfortunately cows are taken to secluded places and slaughtered. And it's horrible the way they're treated. It's horrible the way they're treated and exploited to get their milk, and it's horrible the way they're treated when they're taken to the slaughterhouse and, and slaughtered. So uh, such people are called murderers, and as Prabhupada says, they're condemned to death by the order of a pious king like Maharaj Pariksit. So now we know why there's so many people being killed every day in the United States and so many people fighting, so many people in distress, economic downturn, the Chinese flu, hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, and uh, rioting, and all these things are happening because the leaders have become low-class persons. The uh, Chetres are not doing their duty properly, and society is in disarray, and people suffer. However, the, the uh, stage of, of uh, or the progress of Kali Yuga can be stopped for a certain time. That's why Lord Chaitanya came, and he's given a, a window of 10,000 years where Krishna consciousness can flourish and people have a chance to attain God-realization and, and uh, go back to Godhead, even in one lifetime, if one is serious. So what's interesting is that to understand the difference between the soul and the body is extremely important for people to become devotees. Therefore, Krishna's beginning instruction in Bhagavad Gita is explaining the difference between the soul and the body. And to understand that we have an eternal soul. And in the uh, Life Comes from Life is a very wonderful explanation uh, 
where Prabhupada explains how we can all perceive the eternality of the soul. <clears throat> First of all, he says that uh, material life means forgetfulness of Krishna, and spiritual mind life means full consciousness of Krishna. So he says that darkness comes from light. Light does not come from darkness. And when there's no light that's visible, there's darkness. So he says also that there are no clouds in the sun. But yet, the sun produces clouds, mist, and dimness. When, when the sunlight is shrouded uh, by clouds and other things, there's darkness. And then when the sun uh, seems to be uh, blocked by the moon, there's darkness. So people who always live in darkness and come to the light, they think that the light comes from the darkness. But it's not true. They were always living in darkness, and when they come to the light, it actually hurts their, their eyes. So that darkness is the desire for sense gratification in the material world, and that, that blinds the vision of a person. However, the sun produces clouds, it produces mist, and it produces dimness or darkness. The sun is never changed by these things, and these things are temporary. So the body that we get is a temporary thing. And it takes about nine to 10 months for it to develop in the womb of a mother. So when the body is pushed out, people say the baby is born. But actually, the baby was uh, the the soul in the in the body of that baby is is eternal. Now, how do we know that? Well, we know that we're alive during the day, and then we get tired, and we go to sleep. And later on, we wake up and we remember. Yes, I was alive before I went to sleep. That's the proof that we're eternal. When you wake up and you remember that you're the same person who went to sleep. So this whole thing about birth and death is very similar to that. When we die, it's only the body that dies. And we go into a deep sleep for some time until we're pla our soul is placed into another body mother's womb and a body is formed in the womb around the soul and at a certain point we're pushed out and we think oh now I'm born but actually we were existing all that time we never really died uh, only the body dies in the same way before we go to sleep we know we're existing we go to sleep we forget when we wake up, we remember, yeah, I'm, I'm the person this, in this body. But there's one thing about the body. In every second, it's changing. And this is an amazing point that Prabhupada makes. Uh, and how can he make that? He says, it's based on the blood corpuscles. If you look up blood corpuscles, you'll see that... In every moment, over 2 billion blood corpuscles are being produced in the body. And Prabhupada says, that means you're changing your body every second. Every second you're changing your body. And, and therefore, how many times have you changed your body in this lifetime? Well, I, I calculated it. It comes out to something like 32 million times in a lifetime. <laughs> If you count every second, you're, you're, you're producing so many blood corpuscles uh, and you do all the multiplications. It comes out over 32 million times. You've changed your body. 
you see. But you're still the same person. And then the last change of body in this lifetime is death. But you did not die changing your body so many times in life uh, in this particular body, and you're not going to die when you change the body after death. So these are amazing points that pa Prabhupada makes. Uh, and it's just like uh, we are uh, like one pencil of light in the sunlight. It's, we've gone over this several times already in previous classes. It's explained in the Brahma Samhita uh, and uh, also Prabhupada explains it in Bhagavad Gita and other places. So uh, we have an, an eternal existence. We enter into the material world because of becoming envious of Krishna. But at no time are we actually dead. The only uh, it's what confuses us is that we have a material body covering our soul. And that body is constantly changing also. And then the last change in this particular life is death. Uh, so if we understand these things, we don't get confused. And the human form of life is the only form of life that you can free yourself from the cycle of birth and death. You can't do it as a dog, you can't do it as a cat, unless there's very, very special mercy, but that's very rare. So, therefore, uh, if we understand the uniqueness of the human body and its potential, then, and, and the other point is that when one is in the cycle of birth and death, in the lower forms, one is always going up. But when one becomes a human being, it's possible of going down or up. It's only in the human form of life that you can go up or down. In the animals and insects and birds and, and uh, reptiles and uh, fish and plants and mammals, you always go up. But as a human being, if, if we, like for example, a human being who likes to eat pig, like the Samoans and others, Americans also like to eat pig. Next life you become a pig. Look how, many and look how far down you go, right? Or if you like to kill ants, or if you uh, meditate on monkeys all the time, you know, there are people like that. Especially when people take drugs, they, uh, they get stuck on something, uh, like an ant or a, a monkey or a, a snake. And they get fascinated by it and they just meditate on it. Uh, well, it's very possible in the next life they can take birth in, in that, uh, let's say, lower form of, of being. And then it's just starting all over again, going little by little back to the human form again. So if we, we, if we read these things, we think about it, then we become very sober about human life and not waste even a second uh, forgetting Krishna. In fact, Prabhupada says something very nice in the ninth uh, chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, he says, 18th verse, Sorry, no, uh, not the 18th verse, 25th verse. He says, um, oh, wait a minute. Mm. I'm sorry, one second. The Mahatma, this is uh, verse 13, I'm sorry. The Mahatma does not divert his attention to anything outside Krishna because he knows perfectly well that Krishna is the original supreme person, the cause of all causes. There is no doubt about it. Such a Mahatma or great soul develops through association with other Mahatmas, 
pure devotees. Pure devotees are not even attached to Krishna's other features, such as the four-armed Mahavishnu. They are simply attracted by the two-armed form of Krishna. They are not attracted to other features of Krishna, nor are they concerned with any form of a demigod or of a human being. They meditate only upon Krishna and Krishna consciousness. They are always engaged in the unswerving service of the Lord and Krishna consciousness. Now, Prabhupada repeats this again in the 18th chapter, 65th verse. And I'll read that also. He says, These words stress that one should concentrate his mind upon Krishna, the very form with two hands carrying a flute, the bluish boy with a beautiful face and peacock feathers in his hair. There are descriptions of Krishna found in the Brahma Samhita and other literatures. One should fix his mind on this original form of Godhead, Krishna. One should not even divert his attention to other forms of the Lord. The Lord has multi-forms as Vishnu, Narayana, Rama, Varaha, etc. But a devotee should concentrate his mind on the form that was present before Arjuna. Concentration of the mind on the form of Krishna constitutes the most confidential part of knowledge and this is disclosed to Arjuna because Arjuna is the most dear friend. So twice he repeats this in the Bhagavad Gita. That means it's the utmost importance. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with people who are meditating on Vishnu or Mahavishnu or, or some other form of the Lord, uh, like Nisringadev, for example. But the Mahatmas, the pure devotees who have completely surrendered unto Krishna, who are regularly meditating on Bhagavad Gita, and Srimad Bhagavatam, which is all about Krishna, right? So they keep their mind focused on uh, this little cowherd boy or Krishna in, in Mathura or Krishna in Dwarka and uh, do not think of anything else. So one example of that is the gopis, after Krishna left the uh, Rasa Leela dance uh, and walked off with, uh, with following uh, Rad uh, Radharani, the gopis also went into the forest and looking for Krishna. And at one point, Krishna left Radharani because she became a little proud that she thought she had conquered Krishna. And now the gopis found Radharani and all together they were looking for Krishna. And at one point, Krishna appears purposely as uh, uh, Narayana or, Mahavish, or, or, or uh, Vishnu. And the gopis uh, encounter him. And, of course, they give their obeisances, but they feel very unsettled because they don't want to see him. They want to see Krishna. So Krishna was tantalizing them by doing that. And, but in the presence of Radharani, he couldn't keep that form. And he eventually uh, showed his form, a uh, two-armed form to the ultimate pleasure of the gopis and, and of course, Radharani. So, uh, as devotees in Krishna consciousness, we are fortunate enough to have uh, Radha Nila Madhava and we should fix our mind on them. Of course, in the body of Krishna, all the other expansion, his, his, his expansions are present. Just like Lord Chaitanya once manifested the Sad Bhuja, uh, that is Krishna and uh, Lord Rama and uh, uh, the third one was what? Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, yeah, himself. So he, he manifested the Sad Bhuja to uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. And in his pastime as uh, Lord Chaitanya also, he he manifested the form of Mahavishnu in the house of, of uh, Advaita Charya. And, and one time he became uh, Varaha. He showed his form as Varaha. So all the, all the expansions of the Lord are present in his original form as Krishna. <clears throat> However, the devotees, they give special attention 
to the form that was present before Arjuna or the form of Krishna that is present in Vrindavan. So this is real meditation. So when you see Mayavadis meditating, trying to meditate on the light or on the, uh, the point of their nose or on the third eye or whatever, you can see how far away they are from the truth. And because of that, they fall down, even if they attain Brahman realization. However, if we always meditate on Krishna and his transcendental pastimes, and part of his transcendental pastimes are his expansions, but, but just like Arjuna, he saw the universal form that was to uh, debunk any person who claims to be Krishna in this Kali Yuga. Uh, so he wanted to see the form so that people would have a criterion to know uh, whether someone is a real incarnation or not. And then he did not want to, he became very disturbed by seeing the universal form. So he wanted to see uh, Krishna's original form, but then Krishna shows him his forearm form. And then Arjuna is still uh, not so satisfied. And when Krishna shows his two-arm form, then Arjuna became completely satisfied. So. Uh, Krishna tells him in the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, he says, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Sudur Darshamidam Rupam Dristavam Asiman Yan Mama Deva Apyasya Rupasya Nityam Darshana Kankshinaha. The Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Arjuna, this form of mine you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form which is so dear. And before that, he's, uh, Arjuna says, Drist Vedam Manasam Rupam Tava Somyam Janardana. When, Krishna, when Arjuna thus saw Krishna in his original form, he said, O oh, Janardana. Seeing this human-like form so very beautiful, I am now composed in mind and I am restored to my original nature. And in the purport, Prabhupada says, here the words manasam rupam clearly indicate the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be originally two-handed. Those who deride Krishna as if he were an ordinary person are shown here to be ignorant of his divine nature. If Krishna is like an ordinary human being, then how is it possible for him to show the universal form and again to show the four-handed Narayana form? So it is very clearly stated in Bhagavad Gita that one who thinks that Krishna is an ordinary person and who misguides the reader by claiming that it is the impersonal Brahman within Krishna speaking is doing the greatest injustice. Krishna has actually shown his universal form and his four-handed Vishnu form. So how can he be an ordinary human being? A pure devotee is not confused by misguiding commentaries on Bhagavad Gita because he knows what is what. The original verses of Bhagavad Gita are clear as the sun. They do not require lamplight from foolish commentators. So he's talking about Dr. Radha Krishna, who said you should not offer service to Krishna, but what is beyond Krishna. <laughs> so I have a copy of it his translation. I used to carry it with me, but the, I, uh, I stopped because I didn't want to contaminate the other books. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, this original form of the Lord uh, is the, the, the meditation of the devotees. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Kije. Are there any questions? Yes. No, they can go up or down also. Just like uh, Indra, he becomes a pig because uh, he, he insulted, or, or I think he killed his guru, one of his gurus. He became a pig. And when uh, uh, Brahma came to him and said, look, you know, you have to stop this pastime as a pig. 
and assume you're performing injury again. And he said, no, I'm, I'm happy like this. I have the little piglets, I can eat stool, and it tastes good. You know. So, no, even the demigods, they can go up or down. Any, Any other questions? All glories to Srila Prabhupada.